Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am joined by my daughter. Hello. And so in this inspection, we're going to do two things. We're looking through the hive like we normally do, see if there's disease, see if there's evidence of a queen or see the queen herself. And we are also going to do our rural night test. So you can see these are two medium supers on the top. This is where the honey is. Anything they fill in there will be our honey that we get to keep. And then this little purple thing is the queen excluder. And you can see that there's a large amount of bird comb on, on top and below of the excluder. Yeah, and we save that. So we'll see how much we have at the end of the season with the bird comb. And at some point, if we actually do extract honey, we'll have cappings that we can melt down as wax. And we, one day we'll learn how to you know, make a candle. Yep, so here we're smoking them. I think in this video, I'm just going to fast forward through a bunch of the more boring parts. But it is interesting to see all of the workers going all over the hive and how many there are. So I'm pulling frame number two, so this is where we always start. You can see that's just packs full of honey. All that white capped stock is the honey. And in the middle, kind of like a rainbow pattern, that's where the queen is and the some eggs. But this was a package originally, and I think they had not a lot of space. So here's the outside one. So both sides are all built out. I think actually two weeks ago that didn't have anything really built out, so they've been a good job building that frame out. And so I believe the next frame is the one where we do the Varroa test. And so the Varroa mite is uh, an invasion of the parasite. And so this is where I have a cup and it's rubbing up on the bottom. And so I'm just dragging this along a frame with brood and newly hatched bees and workers. And as I pull it down, you can see they just sort of fall right in. And the cup itself has a level, so it has a line to say how much to fill up with workers. Make sure that you don't accidentally you know, pull the queen in there and kill the queen. But what you do is you put them in, and I'm just fast forwarding this, we shake this, you shake it for you know, a couple of minutes just to try to dislodge any of the varroa mites so you can get a count. You'll see them float down at the bottom of that. Fast forwarding, and then there's me shaking up the cup of these. Yeah, I don't think we show the result. We only saw one for all my inside. So if you have more than three, you'd want to test. So three varroa per 200 bees is 1%. So we only had one. So we decided not to treat them this time around. And you continue on with your inspection, and I continue shaking up the bees while trying to escape from the guards that were still trying to get me in my veil. Yeah, I think they have a lot to protect. So this is the package was very docile when we first got it. They're very relaxed, but I think now that they have, you know, a lot of resources, a lot of honey, brood, queen, workers, kind of they have a little bit more to protect. Mm -hmm. So now I think we already checked it because I can see it's on the Yeah, so we checked it. Yeah, in between. And here I'm just showing a frame with all that pollen all those colorful cells, and then there's some workers or brood interspersed. So again, I think this is where the bottom box just is honey-bound. Do you want to explain what honey-bound is? Uh, honey-bound is when the bees make a lot of honey, but um, there isn't, but sometimes there isn't enough, like the queen doesn't really know where to lay because there's so much honey, you know, she can't lay in honey. Yeah, so. Honey and then pollen and nectar and other resources. That's still a huge population, and I believe now in July we're starting to move into a dearth. I mean, there's not as much nectar flow that we'll expect, so we'll. So let's see if you can see where the queen is in this ring. Yeah. So here we see the queen. Mm -hmm. 
and then in the fall she will start to lay um, fat bees. So because the fat bees live longer in the winter and they live I think six months and she has to lay them because she can't she can't um, survive if the bees around her only survive creeks. She can keep laying but it's tiring. It's too cold and not resource not coming in yet, so she'll start that actually September, October, that's when she'll be doing that. Mm -hmm. The difference is these are all, they're very small, I remember, they, they remember them being much bigger when we first got them because they were all the winter bees that came from the mm -hmm. But now they're like, as big as flies. They're small, but I'm starting to see some more larger bees. Either it's um, the queens have started laying um, bigger bees or they're just laying more drones. But I don't think that's happening because in this hive I don't really see any drones at all. I, mean, I see like a couple. You know, it's not it's not too much. Fast forward through this, and then you know, again, the inspection takes a little bit of time. So there's just a huge population. This is the first brood box, and there's a second brood box. And with the queen excluder, they don't seem like they want to move up into the honey supers as much. But when I've taken it off, they also haven't moved in. So we just fast forwarded. So now we show the second brood box on top. And so this one. They filled out the first one on the bottom first. This one they had a little bit more time to draw out the comb. So I think they had more of an opportunity to arrange the top part just as they'd like. So again, we start with frame number two. And this is a really good pattern. So you can see it's like a rainbow. The middle where it's the bright yellow, that's where the drones are, or rather the, um, the brood, the workers. And then around the white caps is the honey. So they call it the honey dome. So you can imagine it's almost like in the hive, there's a basketball on the bottom in the middle, and that's where the queen will lay the brood and the workers. And then around that is where they put the honey. And so with the two brood boxes, the middle sort of basketball area where the brood is and upside is the honey, and they'll keep stacking honey on top of the dome. So that's where you put in honey supers on top and they'll just keep filling honey up as long as they have space to fill it up. Yeah. They got really good patterns. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of I don't know if there's a better way to encourage them to go up into the honey supers, but they have a space, so if they really want it, they can go up. Yeah, I don't think they really... I think most of the bees that like are around the honey are mostly nurse bees, because when we put the queen suit on, they, the nurse bees are usually trying to be with the queen. So the foragers are the ones who have to move up into the space, not the nurse bees. But we can't really convince the nurse bees to go up because that's not their job. Their job is to be with the queen. Yeah, take care of the fruit that emerges. Mm -hmm. And feed the larva. The larva. I never understood. Is it larva or larvae? Larvae. I don't think it's more full around your colony, it's just the growing. Mm -hmm. So it's also interesting. So I didn't leave a lot of space in frame 10, the frame furthest away from where we're looking. And so that was close to the hive body. So I think in a second we'll take a look at what happens when the workers have extra space. So here at the top frame and the frame right below, you can see on the left side how they kind of fit together the way the honeycomb curves around itself.
So this is where it's very important to put the frames back in order to take them out in because there's certain B space that they want to maintain. And so uh, if you miss a mix match frames, they may not have enough space or may not be assigned appropriately. I think after you uncap and then extract, it'll all be sort of the same width, so it's okay to put them in. Yeah, we were making sure that there's that they do have the right amount of space. They're not. They, it's not violating these space. Yeah, so I, you're supposed to push all the frames together in the middle. You also can get spacers that'll make you space out the frames exactly. But generally, as long as you push the frames together and towards the middle, that will work well. The outside's not a little bit of extra space. Yeah, you know, I made a little mistake there at the side. So I'm just going to put this back together. I also find as I pull the frames out, I want to keep them together. And if you leave a lot of space in between, it becomes a little bit trickier to push them together. You don't want to crush feed, so it's a little bit better to you know, keep them tight as much as you can. So with that, we will put on the clean excluder. We after this went through the honey supers and saw that they were drying out the nectar, so everything's going on well there. But if you liked this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you for watching!